In this video, we're going to be setting up the Esheen Razor flight control board. This is the Esheen Safe flight control board. If you bought the FPV version, then all the flight control board and everything will be connected up already. Uh, but if you've bought the flight control board afterwards, then these are the connections. Uh, that's the way it faces there. So you'd have S bus into the left hand side, aileron Y lead, elevator, throttle. You won't have a rudder and auxiliary is uh, an extra channel you can use if you want to. So let's have a look at the connections. We have XT60 for the 2S LiPo or lithium iron. We have a voltage sensing wire here that goes to the flight control board for the low voltage return to home function. JST plug for the little uh, video camera. So the red LED is the GPS indicator. If it's not on at all, the GPS isn't connected. And we definitely connected there. We've got the flashing blue light to show the GPS is powered up. Flashing like this, it still hasn't acquired more than five satellites, which is what you need to go flying. Once it goes solid, that tells us we have enough satellites. And, and the green LED, solid green, is return to home mode. And you'll get the beeping until the GPS has acquired enough satellites. Blinking light is stabilized mode. No green light is manual mode. Now to calibrate the radio to the flight control board, you need to switch the mode switch quickly a couple of times. Does that little wiggle and then the trims are transferred from the radio to the flight control board. Now to calibrate the level. Once we've calibrated the radio, we can calibrate the level. To do that, we must have 100% weight on all the mixes. That's aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. Otherwise it won't work. It has to be 100% and you have to have rudder channel as well because we're relying on the stick inputs to tell the flight controller what to do. So that's a trick that will catch out a lot of people. So to calibrate the level, hold the sticks down and out, wait till we get green flashing light and let go. Green and red are flashing together. Wait for it to do its level. There we go. Does a wiggle and level is done. And now if we need to, we can change the weights here. So I think I had the ailerons down at 40. So we'll put that back down to 40 and see what that does out in the field. Now the manual says it has an auxiliary takeoff mode. Uh, and what you do is put it into return to home mode, move the throttle stick away from the zero position. And then it says to hold the plane and run until the propeller spins uh, and then launch the plane and it will fly straight and climb to 30 meters and circle up to 70 meters altitude uh, until you select another mode. So we'll try that out. I think we'll be able to just put it into return to home, lift the throttle and throw it and it should do all the same stuff. So in the low voltage return to home, when it detects the low voltage, which is 3.3 for a lithium ion, or if you've set it to LiPo, it's 3.7 per cell. So now we'll talk about the three different flight modes. Return to home mode, when we switch to return to home, the, the plane will fly back at about 13 metres per second to the takeoff point and then circle around at 70 metre altitude, 50 metre radius above the takeoff point until you change to a, another mode. And also when the altitude is less than 30 meters, if the throttle is at the lowest position, the motor will stop. Now stabilizer mode, maximum pitch 55 degrees, maximum roll 55 degrees. And when you center the sticks, the plane will fly level. In manual mode, uh, you have total control. Now if when you connect it up, you get this sort of sound, put it in manual mode. We get that constant beeping of the ESC, that's telling us that we need to redo the throttle calibration for the ESC when it's connected to the flight control board. That's something that catches me out often. You do the throttle calibration connected to a receiver, but then when you connect it to the flight control board, the throttle range is different. So we'll redo that. 
Put the throttle on full. Telemetry lost. Throttle on full. Connect it up again. Telemetry recovered. Wait for the two beeps. There we go, throttle down. And now we should be right. To set up the propeller brake or the ESC brake, uh, now this says it's an Eshin ESC, but all of this stuff is, is Zod based, I think. So I'm using the Zod 30 amp ESC light series instruction manual that tells me all the beeps to look out for. The brake is the first one, so uh, we need to connect it up on your radio. Make sure it's armed. I'll put it in manual mode. Put the throttle on high. Connect the battery. Then wait for the programming mode music. It takes a while. So now we're in programming mode, brake, go down. Now we've got four different levels of braking. That was soft, this is medium, that's hard, super hard. Go up and that's accepted, down again and the brake has been set. Now we're ready to fly. Now, if you mess up this program, you can you can reset the ESC number nine down here. That's a, a long beep and four short beeps. And now let's connect up the little VC400 all in one video camera and video transmitter uh, using the provided JST plug. So there we go. So you've got an on-screen display, band and channel A1. That's the frequency, this is the power here, this is the VBAT voltage powering the camera and the flight time. Now we can, pushing the little button here, so short push changes the channel and back to A1 again. Exactly the same as the, the Zod, so you can get the manual from the Zod website to work out how to set it up. Video format is NTSC, field of view 120 degrees. And you can change the output power from pit mode, I think 0.1 milliwatts, 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts to 400 milliwatts. To change the output power, we're in pit mode now, 0.1 milliwatts. You hold it down until the numbers flash, power numbers flash. And then you short press 25, 200, 400, but it gets very hot at 400. So I would be keeping it at 25 if you can. Maybe 200. Alarm. There we go. I'll leave it on 200. To some extent, I've come up with a bit of a solution to the vibrating prop or the out of balance prop. If you take the little cap off, have a look at the bolts holding each blade on, and they were actually both bolted in the same way. So the head of the bolt was on the same side, which gives an imbalance in weight to the spinner or the center hub. So I've just taken one of the bolts out and put it in from the other side. It's not designed to go like that uh, and it doesn't screw in as well to the plastic but uh, it is much smoother now. So I think that's a design fault really to have the head of the bolt both on the same side. It needs to be as symmetrical as possible. Much less vibration now. Thank you.